My, my job's a tree surgeon and forestry contractor. Um, the work behind you is forestry work in that we're in a wood thinning it out for the benefit of the remaining trees and producing a produce which in this case is going off to be used as firewood. Uh, the tree surgery side of things tends to be in more domestic situations, uh, private houses where we might be taking down a dangerous tree or pruning it to suit somebody's particular requirements for their garden. Um, I got into the industry um, when I left school at 16. I'd had an interest in it beforehand. Uh, my parents had open fires and so we used to go out cutting firewood with my father and um, my dad wasn't particularly good at starting chainsaws and because I could start it when I was about 13 he said I could have it. At the time I was probably keen on going into farming but my parents didn't farm um, and I saw forestry as a, an alternative um, which would be better suited to somebody who didn't have a family uh, farming background. Um, I left school at 16, uh, didn't want to stay on for A-levels, um, but I went up to a Newtonbrig College, which is in the Lake District, Kenya, and I did a National Diploma in Forestry. Um, and when I was there at 16, I thought it was fantastic fun that I've got friends that were back at home who sat um, back at school in the classroom, and I was out learning how to operate big machinery and fell trees. Uh, but there was an academic side to it as well, but I was really interested in that. And after the National Diploma, I came back to Suffolk and worked for Elvedon Estates uh, near Thetford on their forestry team and really started to um, enjoy the practical working on, on a big forestry side of it. So after Elvedon, I, um, I got to the stage there where the, um, I probably gained as much experience as I could. Um, and I left Elvin to go self-employed, um, working actually as a tree climber. Um, I'd had a hobby in rock climbing and I'd learnt to use a chainsaw, so I put the two together and, and started climbing trees um, as a self-employed climber working for other companies. Um, and I did that for uh, a year and a half and then I went off to university um, to do a degree in rural land management um, and while I was at university I carried on working as a self-employed um, climber um, in holidays and started building up a bit of a firewood round in my own right which worked in quite well at being at university because I could um, have that wood seasoning while I was back at my studies. Um, and then after university I worked as a land agent um, and a big part of that work was forestry management and consultancy. Um, I was involved in the selling of several woodlands and buying of several woodlands and valuation of woodlands. Um, so I covered a different side of the forestry industry but eventually I've ended up back on <laughs> um, with my hands on the tools uh, running my own business. Um, just in the last few years of the job, some of the changes that I've noticed has been, uh, number one, the huge increase in demand for firewood, which is largely down to how popular wood burners have become. Uh, many people, I think, because of the price of oil and because of a growing awareness of natural resources and self-sufficiency, have installed wood burners. The, the skills and attitudes most needed for our job, I would say, Number one, when you're just on the tools, it's physical fitness. You've got to be physically fit to cope with um, some of the size of, of wood that we're dealing with and moving. It's, it's very physically strenuous, but it's, it's more than that. It's the ability to grit your teeth and get on with it when things aren't pleasant, uh, when it is really cold, or when it's throwing it down with rain, or even today it's quite warm, it's muggy, and we're having to drink a lot of water. David in the background, he's just 18. He's uh, left school and, and came to work for me. He's done his chainsaw certificates, uh, which is a basic competency which says that he's safe and able to use a chainsaw. Um, well, that's just a starting block. Many trees are different, weather conditions are different, so he's um, gradually learning um, how to fell different species of trees in different scenarios. Um, he knows how to do it safely, but he's still got to work on um, skills and speed um, and 
so on. Apart from basic chainsaw um, skills, we would also um, see it fairly essential because we're working on our own, we have to be quite self-sufficient. So we're, we're all trained in first aid, and we all have emergency procedures on us, um, carry first aid bandages, and, and be happy that if, we, if it came to it, we could use those. And um, what to do, you know, should the worst happen, we hope it never will, we hope that our training is in, in, in the skills as such that these accidents don't happen, but it is important that we have additional skills which we hope will never be used. Other skills just get picked up along the way. Um, we're working outside, so it's lovely to um, observe and work with nature and try and um, help things along. Um, we have other machinery such as tractors and timber frames. Um, and one of the big skills needed actually for, for tractors and, and working in forestry isn't necessarily the ability to skillfully operate that equipment, it's to be able to fix it when it goes wrong. Um, we're, you know, we're out in woods, sometimes we could be quite some way from anywhere and we need a little bit of mechanical knowledge so that we can get ourselves back up and working again rather than everything grinding to a halt. Um, if it's turbers and there's a problem, that person can't very often go off and fix it because then that other person's working on their own. So just a small mechanical problem can affect the productivity of everybody. So mechanical skills and interest is, is, is good. The, the other skills involved in the job, um, skills and knowledge, are um, tree species. You know, there's a whole variety um, of different species and some are more suited to different soil types. Uh, we're also involved in the planting and establishment of trees and so um, there's good practical skills and knowledge needed into how to plant a tree and nurture that tree and plant, make sure that the best tree is planted and look at the objectives as to why we're planting a tree as to what species or size of tree to plant would be most appropriate. Um, the traditional woodsman skills um, aren't just the practical um, know-how of how to operate machinery and so on, but it's seeing what's actually happening in the woods and why we were actually carrying out this work. Uh, the work behind us, we're thinning out this woodland, so um, initially probably something like two and a half thousand trees per hectare would have been planted and if they'd have all been left with no management they would have forced each other to grow very tall and straight but then been quite whippy and would never have put any girth on and they would have started to shade each other out. So the work we're doing is thinning it out to concentrate the growth of the remaining trees um, into the better trees. So picking out the smaller trees, trying to leave the trees which we're most favouring, which in this case is oak. Um, oak's generally seen as, as being a desirable timber, lots of uses for it. Um, traditionally in this country it's been the tree which has had the most value. And so we're favouring the oak so that hopefully in a hundred years time there'll be some fantastic, magnificent oak timber trees. Um, but if oak in this situation is left without any interference, other trees like ash grow faster and grow over the top of the oak. And then within probably the next 20 years, the oaks might start to have died out. So the woodsman skills are really observing nature and then observing how we can interfere and suit it to, to what we want um, and for our requirements. Another crucial skill for me particularly is to be able to communicate with a whole variety of different people, people that are working for me, to make sure they understand what's expected of them um, and clearly know what they have to do, to other people that are involved in the land that we're working on. Um, on many woods that we're working, there's a landowner that owns that wood uh, that we're working for, um, they might be a timber buyer, um, there's very often a gamekeeper and uh, of course the general public. The general public um, have an interest in woods but often in their ignorance um, they think felling a tree can be a bad thing so we have to often um, spend some time with dog walkers, people that come passing by who are interested just to try and explain what we're doing, give them the bigger picture about what's happening and why um, what we're doing is, is for the greater good. Um, so communication is a big big skill to have, um, something we constantly need to work on uh, and improve on. 
but it's, it's something that I'm very aware of and um, I'll, yeah, if you want to um, consider that it's, it's, it's a good skill to have. Things I, things I most enjoy about the job uh, and maybe some things that I don't particularly enjoy about the job. It is a job that I really enjoy. On the whole, I absolutely love it. I like the physical work, um, going home physically tired at the end of the day. Uh, I think forestry is one of the most physical jobs still left. Um, so I enjoy the physical side of things. I enjoy being outside. Um, we get to enjoy some fantastic weather um, when most people or many people might be in an office. Um, we have simple pleasures. Very often we would have a fry up at lunch on an open fire. Um, just to sit and take half an hour outside is something that I get an enormous amount of um, satisfaction from. Um, we enjoy um, working with nature and, and um, having a hands-on approach. Many people have lives which are totally disconnected from the natural world, but we very much feel a part of it and, in, and enjoy that. Um, I enjoy the challenges of um, the job when we can look back and see how we've changed things. Um, I'm 32, but I planted trees when I was 16, and it's lovely now to look and see these quite big trees. Um, and really see how that young woodland has made its mark on the landscape. Um, so that's a very enjoyable part of the job. I also get a lot of satisfaction from seeing trees that we've felled being used uh, for things. Um, firewoods are common use, but uh, we do fell trees which go for timber. And it's nice to be able to see some fantastic pieces of furniture which are well made and will probably last for centuries to come, being made from a tree that we, we felled and had a party. Um, things I don't maybe enjoy, well with anything there's always an element of bureaucracy and we need to always get permission from government bodies before we fell trees and it's not necessarily something I I, um, I hate doing or filling the forms in but it, it can just be a bit of a bind um, to go through the, the hurdles of doing it but, but it's um, still part of the job and, and something we have to do. Um, I'm self-employed so I've got tax returns and invoices to send out. Um, cash flows can be a bit up and down because there's always a delay between us doing the work and then getting any money in. Money in, money in. So um, firewood in particular, um, we like to sell seasoned wood which has got a low moisture content which means that that wood has to have dried out. Um, and even when it's cut and split so that the moisture can more easily come out of the wood um, it can be a year before we could resell that and get any income back. I've done a couple of jobs this summer which has involved climbing trees where there's been birds um, that the British Trustful Authority have been interested in bringing. So we've climbed the trees and caught the chicks, lowered the chicks to the ground where um, they would be weighed and ringed and then sent back up to them. Um, so I climb a tree which contained um, a buzzard's nest. Buzzards are quite a large bird of prey and get those chicks, send those down to the ground. And then also um, a hobby chick. Now the hobby is one of the smallest, if not the smallest, bird of prey in this country. And um, climb a tree where a hobby nest is right at the top of, catch the chicks and lower those down to the ground. How I see the future of the industry, um, I think over the next few years wood fuel will continue to be a big part of, of, of the work. Um, I've already noticed that there's woods which would have been une uneconomic to do any work in, which now, because of the demand for wood fuel, um, means that the, um, the whole reason to go in the woods and start thinning them out and carry coppicing, carrying out work, is because there's now a market for that produce due to the increase in wood fuel. I don't see that declining in the future. If anything, it will continue to increase, um, particularly as bigger power stations come on, on board um, and start using more and more. Um, I think there's always then going to be that demand for the small homeowner and hopefully their wood will come from the small woods that we work in.